All right, you must be living under a rock if you have not heard about ChatGPT and its impact on like every area of life. Like AI is just blowing up right now. And there are an insane number of startups that are basically just like repackaging ChatGPT for this and that and the other thing, whether it's screenwriting, articles, blogs, email copy, sales copy, scripts, all kinds of stuff. There are so many exciting things happening in the world of AI. So I thought, why not talk about how ChatGPT is impacting venture capital? So what did I do? I went to ChatGPT and asked the Wizard of Oz over there how ChatGPT is going to impact venture capital. And here are some of its responses. So the first thing it suggests is that ChatGPT will be able to improve data analysis, that it can help investors quickly and efficiently analyze vast amounts of information and data, allowing them to make more informed investment decisions in startups. So I guess this is true. So you, one of the challenges though, is you have to have access to the information and the data. And usually that's the harder part, not the actual analysis of it. So to the extent that ChatGPT has access to that information, then yeah, I think I buy that. And the reality is like, if I'm trying to make an investment decision, being able to pull a bunch of data, particularly around competitors, like show me all the competitors that are out there, ChatGPT, and show me what kind of traction each one of them has and what kind of reviews and what kind of repurchase rates, that sort of thing would be super valuable in terms of helping, helping me as a venture investor make better decisions. But I'm not convinced yet that ChatGPT is gonna have access to better information than I do most of the time as it is already. Now maybe ChatGPT could be better at like consolidating the information and analyzing it and like pulling out like interesting or key findings for me or, or like make, make that whole process go faster. So that could be interesting. But I mean, it's kind of like, good data in, good data out, bad data in, bad data out, right? And as of right now, all of ChatGPT is based on 2021 data, so it's not up to date. Now, can they fix that? Sure, they can totally fix that. And there will be AIs released over time that have more and more real data. Uh, and then you can also imagine like what happens when you work with uh, a company like ZoomInfo or some of these other large database sites and, that have proprietary data and you plug those into AI and what kind of power that could have. So I don't know, I think this, this is probably like, uh, one of the more helpful things, but honestly, it's not gonna like totally disrupt venture capital. All right, the next one is enhanced due diligence. Well, I mean, this is kind of in a continuation of the prior one, but ChatGPT says that they can assist investors with due diligence by providing relevant data, trends, and market insights, helping to reduce the time and resources required to evaluate investment opportunities. Like I said, it's kind of a continuation of the prior one. You know, if I'm analyzing a market and I have access to all that data already, it would be nice to have, tell, take all that data, dump it into ChatGPT and say, just summarize this for me, pull out all the key points. Uh, that would help accelerate things. I think it's like incrementally helpful, but I don't know that it's like game changing. Um, of course, that's easy for me to say, maybe my analysts and associates would beg to differ since they're the ones cranking through most of the numbers and doing a lot of that, you know, grunt work on the diligence side. Nonetheless, like, yeah, is it gonna help accelerate things? Sure, but you know, there is a risk to accelerating due diligence. And that is, as you accelerate due diligence, it forces other people to accelerate due diligence. And sometimes they don't do as good of due diligence, but they have massive fear of missing out. And that can result in really high valuations. So we saw this in 2021. Essentially, Tiger Global had built a machine that gave them the ability to do diligence really quickly. Now they were spending a ton of money, but the effect was the same. So what they would do is they would pay Bain Consulting, one of the largest, best management consulting firms out there. Like they know how to do due diligence and research. They would pay them like upwards of $100 million to identify and do all the due diligence on the very best companies within a sector. And then Tiger Global would just like walk in and be like, all of our diligence is already done. We just need to check a few boxes to confirm that what we believe is true. And then here's your term sheet and we'll close in two weeks. Well, that helped spark 
this like acceleration in due diligence. And VCs were like falling all over themselves trying to do diligence as quickly as they could. Frankly, I, I'm not convinced that they did in most cases as good of a job as they should have. And because it just accelerated everything, then it was like all you could really compete on was, was price. Or at least it was one of the few things you could compete on. And that just pushed valuations up, 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 and pushed us into the bubble that we're now suffering from today. So speeding things up isn't always a benefit, um, especially if it causes those kinds of negative externalities. The next thing that ChatGPT suggests is that it can do a better job on predictive modeling. So it can use historical data and trends to predict future outcomes and help investors assess the likelihood of success for a particular startup. So yeah, I could see how that's possible. I think that really pulls back though to data point number one, which is if you have access to the data and you can pull that data in, then hopefully you can make a better decision. I mean, Matt, like one of the biggest challenges in venture capital is that you're trying to, you're, you're trying to assess all of the risks that are out there, but the problem is you don't know what you don't know. And so there could be risks floating out there that you're not aware of. Like maybe, you know, somebody on the management team uh, was convicted of fraud, but you know, you didn't find it when you were doing your background check and then it comes back to bite you in a, in a really big way later on. Uh, or maybe that supplier you think is such a good supplier uh, and you do as much diligence as you can, but turns out like you didn't know that they're on the edge of default, right? And collapse. And when they collapse, now the company that you just invested in can't get access to the product to sell. And, and so they really struggle. So theoretically, like if ChatGPT has access to more data and particularly like maybe the data is broadly available to everybody, but is hard to find or hard to synthesize in a short amount of time. And ChatGPT is able to tap into that, then it can identify these risks and then it can plug them into your data and help you make better decisions and better evaluate like probabilities of success. The challenge is, is that as good as ChatGPT and AI is in general, I'm still not convinced that there's enough processing power uh, in the world to accurately predict all kinds of events, especially when they are all interrelated and compound. Uh, I mean, you think about like black swan events, like how do you predict those? They're of, by their very nature, really hard to predict. And yet those are some of like the biggest risks to a potential business, right? There are all of these like things that you didn't know uh, were interrelated to your business that could end up coming back and killing it. All right, so the next one is virtual networking. This is one that I, I think is a bit of a stretch. So ChatGPT thinks, that it can connect investors with startups and other investors enabling virtual networking and collaboration even during times of physical distance, a la COVID. I don't know, this one feels like a stretch. I don't exactly know how ChatGPT solves like networking. I think maybe it's one of those things where you could say, hey, this is what my startup looks like and what we do. Who would be a good investor for us? I could see that potentially working, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna improve networking per se uh, or communication. It just you know, might help you narrow down where you should be spending your time. And vice versa as an investor, like maybe it's like, hey, ChatGPT, show me all the companies that have these metrics and look like this, right? So I could see how there's value there, but honestly, it's not that much harder just to go into PitchBook or some of these other platforms, like our investment in, in Clearbit, that's also like a big database, and just type in like, hey, show me companies that look like this, and the database can easily uh, query those results and, and give you that same information. So, I don't know, interesting, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite seeing it. So the last one that ChatGPT flagged is increased accessibility. So it's claiming that it can provide investors with access to information and insights that have previously been difficult to obtain. This just sounds like a repeat of number one, right? Enabling them to make better informed decisions. This sounds like number one, two, three. <laughs> uh, in startups and take advantage of opportunities they may have otherwise missed. Okay, so that's kind of interesting, this idea of like opportunities you might have otherwise missed. And so I think that's probably the most interesting part of number five is this idea of like, sometimes you meet a company 
and you do the best job you can in terms of trying to find competitors and so forth. But when a new company starts, typically it's the result of the timing being right. And when the timing is right, it's not just one company that gets started. There's lots of companies that get started. In fact, if you're the only one doing what, sh what you're doing, it's probably a sign that you're either too early or too late with your business idea. Generally too early. If you're too early, that just means that it's gonna be really hard to get customers. Uh, and if you don't get the timing right, you might actually end up running out of money before the timing becomes ideal for your solution. So for example, like Uber was not possible realistically before the smartphone, but not only just before the smartphone, smartphones had to become ubiquitous. And not just that, but they had to have enough processing power and GPS and a bunch of other things to make them really useful for Uber. But as soon as all of that hit, all of a sudden you had a bunch of companies. Like Uber wasn't the only one. Not just Uber and Lyft, there was another company called Cabify. There were, I mean, there were a bunch. There was Get Around. There was, there were a bunch of just like ride share and, and car sharing platforms that all popped up around the same time because the timing was right uh, for that type of business. But like, if you think about it, like what if you lived in New York and you never even heard of Uber because they weren't there yet and you saw this other company, like imagine you're in London and this cool company called Cabify pops up and you're like, hey, uh, this looks like a great business growing super fast. I've never, and you didn't even know that Uber existed. And so you invested a ton of money into Cabify, not realizing that like Uber had figured out a bit better business model or even just at a minimum that Uber was there and raising money, right? Uh, and so maybe there's an opportunity for AI and ChatGPT to like flag some of those competitors. So maybe it's like, hey, ChatGPT, I'm looking at this company, who are all the companies that are similar or competitive or solving a similar value add or pain point? And I think that could actually be an interesting application of AI where it's one thing to solve the same pain point in the same way, which is usually how you think about direct competitors, right? Like, you know, it's like Regal Cinemas versus Cinemark, right? And they're both solving the pain point of, of I want to be entertained and they both do it with movies. It's a little more challenging when you're like, hey, the pain point is I want to be entertained. Show me all the different competitors that are out there that are doing an amazing job entertaining me and be able to surface like social networks, right? Before social networks really blow up and say, hey, look, people are being more entertained on social networks without paying anything than they are in movie theaters. So social networks represent this significant threat to movie theaters that most people, they wouldn't make that, that, uh, that conclusion and draw those lines. But AI theoretically could because it could understand like the context of what you're really looking for, which is, I want to look for companies that are solving the same pain point, not just companies that solve it in the same way. The other thing that I think, you know, there's a lot of fear in the industry around AI uh, that does maybe AI replace venture capitalists, right? And money managers just like plug in, like show me the companies that have the most likelihood of success. And it just like pulls up a whole list and gives it like a ranking and rating. And then they just put their money into those companies based on the rating and ranking. Is that possible? I think, yeah, if it is, those are probably not that interesting of businesses. And let me tell you why. So there have been a bunch of funds that have done this study internally. Uh, and what they do is they look at their portfolio and all the companies, all the companies they invested in, all the companies they missed. And what a lot of these funds have found consistently are that the deals that are the most uh, divisive, as in like the partners can't really agree around the table. Like they, maybe they get the deal done, but like, man, it was a battle getting there. Those tend to do the best. And the ones that were the most obvious tend to do the worst in terms of performance. And I think the reason for that is because if it's obvious, then everybody is doing it, right? It's the same idea. Like when the timing's right and you have this great idea for, uh, for a business, you're probably not alone. There's a lot of other smart people out there that probably have that same idea. And so all these things start at once. Well, if it's a really obvious idea and really obvious that it's going to ultimately be successful, then what happens is investors bid up the price, the valuation, 
until there's not a whole lot of profit left to be made on that investment. And so I think, you know, a lot of the really good investors look for opportunities that go from zero to one. Like I'd be curious to see what ChatGPT would have said about Airbnb way back in the day. My guess is that ChatGPT would have been like, this is never going to work because think about all the liability issues and you've got huge incumbents with Marriott and Hilton and Hyatt and so forth. Uh, this just has way too much risk. But really smart investors would have looked at it and said, yes, but they're going to drive down the price of going on vacation and make it affordable to more people than has ever been possible before. Those people are going to start traveling and the overall market is going to grow by leaps and bounds. And that will make Airbnb successful. Everybody thinks that Airbnb competes with hotels. They really don't. They really don't. They have their own market that they go after that has been created largely because of their business model. So do I worry about ChatGPT as a venture capitalist? Is it gonna replace my job? I don't think so. I think it might reduce the number of jobs in my industry, but I think it'll ultimately just be a tool to help me be more effective in my job and hopefully you know, be a better investor and do better due diligence. But at the same time, I think there's still a lot of value to be had in taking bets, building relationships with entrepreneurs, and finding ways to add value that an AI simply can't do. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, check out When Will the Venture Market Reopen? Thanks.